Hello, dear singer. You are very welcome to Sing Like a Pro Master Class with P. Uche Etiaba, the question and answer segment. You know, over the weeks, we've been receiving different questions from different singers, and we just thought it would be great to start to attempting these questions even before the Sing Like a Pro Master Class comes up in the month of March. Today, I still have with me Polusha Fakoya, who is a renowned music scholar. He loves music. <laughs> and sometimes when he talks music, you really are not sure if he's speaking English. But, well, we have him here today. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Horsford. Nice oh, All right. So we're just going to go ahead and answer some of our questions. This question is very interesting. This says, can guys sing soprano? That means, can guys be soprano singers? Um, yes, theoretically, but there are very few. You know, we actually call them sopranists or sopranista, okay. but there are few of them. But you see, the truth is, uh, to me, it's a disability. Yes, because... Hold on a minute. It's a disability for a guy to be a soprano singer. Is that what you're saying? Because that means your larynx have not fully grown. Hmm. Okay. Go on. That's it. Because it's boys that you know, boys that actually uh, get to soprano range because their larynx have not fully grown as boys. But as men, fully grown men, they're not supposed to sing soprano, but there are some few cases, you know, that we have that actually, uh, you know, they actually do that. Amazing. You know? But most of the people that think that they are boys, they are, they are men soprano singers are not, they're actually counter tenors. Oh, counter tenors? Yes, counter tenors. That's male, that's the boy, men that sing also. Oh, because you know the truth, I know someone who says he's a guy and he says he's a soprano singer. So that's, I'm sure this uh, is a counter tenor. Is a counter tenor. And you could also, you know, if you see different things in quiet these days, I'm also suspecting that he just loves to be with the females. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. You didn't just say that. First of all, you know, this app. You did just say that. <laughs> I, I know it's someone like that. That's why I'm saying what I'm Cut. saying. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> But, but, but the soprano singers that are known, there are some that are known, there are very few pastors. Okay. And it's, it's not a normal thing for, 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 for a man, for to, a man to be a soprano, soprano singer. Soprano singer, which is the highest voice of a female singer. Amazing. Oh, okay. Thank you for this. I'm sure <laughs> you just uh, hit somebody below the bell, but that's what it is. All right, the next question. This is from someone who is a member of a choir. She says, how do you resolve the friction between singers and instrumentalists? Uh, there's a physical resolution and there's a spiritual resolution. Okay. okay. The, usually what brings that kind of uh, conflict is when the singer and the instrumentalist did not rehearse together before coming on the stage to perform. Okay. Okay. So when they come together, the, the singer's like, yo, I'm ready. Are you good to go? The guy says, yes. And when they start singing, they start looking, looking at each other at the point and they start fighting. But if they had worked together, rehearsed together, you know, to know because the, each song she's going to sing should have different keys. Okay. So at the point of, uh, 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 of the movement, uh, the guy knows what, so, so there'll be no, they, 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 by that sense, they already understand themselves. Okay. There's no friction, you know. So I think basically, it's, uh, the mentalists and singers, need to learn to rehearse before time and work together for coming out to perform. Can I ask a question? What if they already rehearsed and then they still have issues? Because this particular lady, I happen to be able to speak with her directly. Yeah. And what she said was, um, in the middle of a service, you know, the instrumentalist is playing and possibly playing on a higher key, right? And then she's trying to get the instrumentalist attention, the keyboardist, you know, can you drop the key? And the guy is fixed on his keyboard, fixed, you know, his gaze is just ahead. So 
uh, how do you resolve uh, uh, that? All, the, the why I believe why the specialist is doing that is because if he changes all of a sudden, the audience will think is the one that made a mistake. So it's better to stand his ground. Well, yeah, that's if you don't just shot at the middle of it. Uh, there must be a te technical pivot from the original key. Okay. It, it must be a technical thing. Mm -hmm. But it does also change the fact that you know suppose just will have uh, so musicians just will have this attitude problem. Okay, and that's why you talked about the spiritual resolution. Yes, yes, yes. If you understand the place you have in music, how music is dear to God's heart, you know, music is a very, very deep thing. It will be difficult for you to miss to have all these kind of issues mm. as a musician or as a singer. Wow, 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 wow! This is really enlightening, and I think a lot more people need to understand this. Something I'll pick out from what you just said, that if we as singers understand the place of music in God's heart, there are certain things that we will not be caught you know, doing, yes, right? Yes, Pastor. Thank you very much. It is short, but very impactful. Thank you for being here, Felicia. I appreciate it. And I trust that you too, you've also learned one or two things from this short discourse. So till we come again with another episode of question and answer segment or sing like a pro master class, I will just encourage you to sign up for the March edition coming up March 4th. The link is right there on the screen. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.